The information featured in this program is general in nature and therefore should not be relied upon. Guests appearing on the program may have commercial arrangements with some of the companies mentioned. Before making any investment, insurance or financial planning decisions, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Welcome to the Shares edition of Your Money, Your Call. I'm Julia Lee from Dell Direct. Tonight on the show, we're very lucky to have Nick Radge from thechartist.com.au and Fraser McLeod from Morgan's Financial. Welcome to the show. I mean, we've seen a lot of concern over China. Ukraine's faded to the background. And I guess, um, Nick, just looking at the technicals for the Australian market, we saw those six-year highs and we've pulled back. I mean, are you nervous about the market? How are you managing your portfolios at the moment? Yeah, short term, there's a few warning signs going on, both here in Australia and in the US technically. Now, it hasn't been enough to change the trend yet, but a lot of the time, this kind of divergence that we do see can change the trend in the short term. So bigger picture, we're still very, very bullish. I think it would be nice to have a, a bit of a pullback in the market, have a bit of a pause, especially in the US market. But I think it's, I think it's coming. It's, at, at the moment, the divergence is not enough to change the trend, but that might come through in the next week or so. OK, so just watching that trend very carefully. So caution at the moment. And we do have an email here now from Tim. And Tim writes, Hi, panel. Can I please have your thoughts on AGI after their recent report? Now, AGI is Ainsworth Gaming. They reported an increase of 60%. 62% in net profit after tax. However, the share price has fallen over 10% since the report. Thank you. So we have seen Ainsworth coming under a little bit of pressure, and that's unusual because we've seen another gaming company, Aristocrat Leisure, doing quite well. In fact, if we have a look at the past, uh, past three months, we've seen Ainsworth actually down by 1%. Whereas we've seen aristocrat leisure gaining 19%. Let's start off with a technical view and we'll go to Nick first. What do you think of AGI Ainsworth? Yeah, well, AGI has been trending very, very well over the last year or two, and it's just now in this nice consolidation phase. We're not really dropping back, we're just having a nice rest here at the moment. That's a very bullish sign, like I always like to say. The market moves from a, a trend to consolidation, trend to consolidation, and that's healthy, and that's what we're seeing here. So at the moment, we're in neutral territory, we're moving sideways. There's probably no reason to be involved right now, because we may stay in a sideways band for a little bit longer. But if we were to pop up, say, through that 475 level, you'd want to be getting on board, because the longer it moves sideways and then moves up, the much more positive we'll get out of it. So I quite like it. Just need a little bit, bit of patience, perhaps up through 475. OK, so the longer the sideways movement, the bigger the breakout when it happens, hopefully on the upside, 475. Hopefully on the upside. It's the target on that the you're downside, watching. On the downside, $4, you probably don't want to be involved okay. right So there. if it passes 475, a uh, very positive move for that's Ainsworth, right. and that's time to get in. We've got Brian on the line from the Gold Coast. Brian, welcome. What's your question tonight? Good evening. Uh, I would like uh, the panel's view on Telstra. Uh, it looks like it is at a critical level, and uh, I'm just mm. concerned that it's going to drop rather than go up. Sure. So looking at Telstra, and of course this is one that a lot of Australians hold in their portfolios. Now still on a very attractive yield of 5.7%. Um, and we've just got the chart up at the moment. Now recently we have seen it trading ex-dividend as well, so that's probably had an impact in terms of price. But um, Nick, what do you think of Telstra? Would you be buying in at these levels, holding, selling? Uh, we're currently in Telstra already, Brian. We've been here um, since late 2011. As you can see from the chart, it's been a very, very nice trend. So we've got no reason at this stage to sell. Similar to Ainsworth, we're now trading sideways. So we've had a good trend over the last couple of years. We're now moving sideways in a nice consolidation. And again, it's a positive sign for me. We'd like to see confirmation of a break up through around that 530 level. If we can get up and through there, then the trend is confirmed as resuming and you'd want to be on board. Um, Conversely, a break back down through 490 will do it for us. We'll be exiting on that and taking our profits. So at this stage, sitting sideways in a range, if we get some upside up through the upper side, we'd be happy to keep going with it. OK, so you're in uh, Telstra at the moment, Correct. staying with it until you get an indication where the trend's going. Oh, we've got Luke on the line. Luke, welcome to the show. Um, oh, yes. G'day, Julia. Hi. Uh, just looking at the uh, ASX 200, Nick's saying that there could be a pullback 
uh, on the ASX 200. I'm, look, I'm, I'm asking the question: At what level would we would Nick uh, be buying uh, anything in the future? Sure, good question coming through from Pete. Now, Nick was talking about a potential pullback on the ASX 200 um, if we if the divergence does continue. Um, Nick, what, what kind of pullback are you looking at? Well, not a, not a huge uh, pullback. I would say back towards about 5,000 on the ASX 200 on the XJO itself would be nice and healthy. I, I would say worst case situation a little bit further than that. Depends what happens in the US market because we are seeing some of this divergence on some bigger time frames, which is quite rare. The low in 2009, as an example, was a weekly divergence, which, which pinpointed the absolute low there. But we're starting to see the divergences on a monthly basis now. So the bigger the time frame, generally speaking, the bigger and more prolonged the fall. So I'd like to see it come back to 5,000. It has met some very good buying demand down at that level. It is good support. So I think that's an initial target, at least to start with. OK, so looking at a pullback all the way to 5,000 points, because we've been back there a number of times Been before, back there a few times, which is why it's that good support level so um, you know I, I'm not looking for anything significant I'm not looking for a bear market I think it will be a good buying opportunity if we get the dip um, I just like to see it happen because it's it's been sitting here for so long now it kind of reminds me of 2013 where we did see a bit of shakiness at the start of the year and then we just kept on going up. Yeah, that's right, that's right. So when you get the divergence on the monthlies, it takes time to, to unravel and, and unfold. So um, now we've got it on the dailies and weeklies, it's starting to speed up. But, um, you know, the US last night was a bit of a surprise up night and goes down for one day, up for five, doesn't it? So it's, who can tell? Absolutely. Let's go to our next call. We've got Francis on the line from Canberra. Francis, welcome to the show. What's your question tonight? Yeah, hi, Julia. I've had a couple of stocks I've held for about six months in my personal super fund. Sure. Just like the uh, the team's view, uh, GEM, G8 yes. Education, Excellent. and TPM, which is TPG Telecom. Uh, both uh, have had phenomenal performances. Just having a look in G8 Education, up 121% over the last 52 weeks, and TPG also doing well. Um, looking at the... Share price performance there. I can't seem to be able to get that one up, up at the moment, but we do have the G8 education stock price chart up there at the moment. I mean, looking at G8, GEM as a stock code, Nick. Yeah, interesting chart here. We were talking before about a stock that consolidates after a big trend and then gets on with it. GEM did that. If we have a look back at our stock chart there on the left hand side, we saw a perfect example. This, this stock sat sideways in a band for six or seven months and then pop out it went and on it goes. I mean, I think the irony here is that we do everything we can to get into a stock that is going to go up. And as soon as it goes up, all we want to do is sell it. Why not just let it go, let it do its thing? It's a stock that's at all time highs, it's, it's growing, it's, it's moving in the right direction. Why not hold it? Let it just run a trailing stock. Um, I'm a little bit annoyed. I was in gem and I did get knocked out and didn't get back in again. So if it comes back down through around the 350 area, 360, I'd probably look to get out. But look, all time highs, stay with it. OK, looking good. The other one was TPG. TPM is the stock code there. Yep. Um, another stock that's done very well, up 110% over the past year. I mean, that telecom space, especially some of those smaller mm. telecom companies have been doing very well. Nick, same thing with TPG? I've, I've got it in my own portfolio for a simple reason. It's going up. It's going That's up. That's all I need to know. Adrian, welcome to the show. What's your question tonight? Oh, good evening, Julia. My question is regarding CCL. I mean, it's a terrible looking uh, share price chart. We've seen the stock down by 27%. From a chart point of view, any signs of this stock bottoming out yet? Um, obviously, momentum clearly down at the moment, Adrian. There's quite good support. I wouldn't call it you know, super strong support, but good support around 1050. If we go all the way back to 1996, it was a significant high point there. Again, it was reached in 2007, this exact level where we're coming into now. And we did see a bit of a charge down there back in 2011. So, look, there's, I, I would say you might see a little bit of buying coming in there, but I'd need to see the trend change before we actually got involved. And at the moment, that's certainly down. Peter, welcome to the show. What's your question tonight? Oh, good evening, Julia. Thanks for taking the call. Um, questions on NEN Energy. Um, I've been watching the stock. It's gone from 43 cents down to yesterday at 2.3 cents. Mm. Opened today and it went up from 2.3 cents to 4.6 cents, so up 100%. 
then it drops slightly in the afternoon for, the, for a trading halt to come in. The company has asked for a trading halt. They say they have an announcement for the market, but there has been no announcements made before that, so we've had a 100% rise for no reason. Does anyone know what's going on with that one? That's an excellent question. <laughs> we've seen Neon Energy shares absolutely spiking before going into trading halt. The stock up almost 70% before uh, entering into a trading halt today. And of course, it's been an extremely volatile ride. This is one that's really dependent on the Vietnamese, uh, the drilling program over in Vietnam. And of course, back in January, we heard an update from the company that wasn't very positive. Now, Neon Energy is due to update the market on a strategic review. Um, but having a look at that price action, I mean, it's very difficult to predict. I mean, Nick, you would say that it's you know, inside of trading. That's all it is. It's inside of trading. It's traded five times its daily average before they've called the trading halt. So tell me someone doesn't know something. But I guess tomorrow or whenever the announcement is made, we'll find out. Yeah, so... Call me a sceptic, but really, seriously. I mean, the stock's up 70%. No news. Goes into a trading halt. We're expecting yep. to see an announcement. Helen on the line from Melbourne. Helen, welcome. What's your question tonight? Oh, firstly, I'd just say, like to say thank you for such an informative program. It's fabulous. Okay. Um, I've been reading about what I think is a division of JB Hi-Fi called JBH, which apparently is focusing on, like, retail, home retail. Mm. Um, I don't have JB Hi-Fi shares. And um, I'm just interested in, in hearing your panel's thoughts on this or whether it's too late to buy into JB Hi-Fi or if I should be going for this JBH. Sure. So having a look at JB Hi-Fi, and we know that JB Hi-Fi has been rolling out some of the home stores, which it is planning to ramp up over the next 52 weeks. Great timing with housing prices in Australia going uh, through the roof. Um, you know, you buy a new house, you want some new furniture. And so these, uh, these retailers, furniture retailers, have been doing very well. Now, JB Hi-Fi, we've seen a bit of a pullback coming through. So we might start off with a technical view from Nick first. Yeah, Margaret, um, it has pulled back a little bit. Again, it's been a very nice trend. We've been riding this. Uh, we're just recently out, actually. We got in and around the 950 level back in uh, October 2012. So we've just been taken out because the way we define the trend, it's now turned. Not necessarily a downtrend at this stage, but certainly the uptrend has completed. So we're in that consolidation phase. To me, it's sitting above nice support, which comes in around the $17.50, $18 mark. If we can stay above that, stay in this range for a little while and start moving higher, then, then I'd be involved again. But at this stage, it's probably had enough of a run over the last couple of years. Needs a pause. That's what we're seeing. Unless it breaks down through around the $17.50, $17 level, um, I'd be happy to buy it if it broke back up again. OK, guys, the um, question tonight is about New Crest Mining. Mm. Um, yeah, they um, traded ex-dividend today, dropped um, a good 7.5%. Newcrest Mining has been a fantastic ride in 2014 and that's of course on the back of that stronger gold price. Um, these gold plays are leveraged plays on the underlying gold price. We've seen the gold price actually up by 15% in 2014 and the gold subsector up by a massive 40%. Now, looking at a technical view, I'm going to ask Nick both about the underlying gold price as well as an outlook for Newcrest in terms of the charts. Um, what, how's it looking at the moment? Yeah, we're quite positive. We think there's more upside. It's come, as, as you quite rightly so, it's come a long way very quickly and as usual that's not particularly healthy. So we'd like to see uh, both have a bit of a pause here before moving higher with specific to Newcrest, you know, might see a bit more of a dip down there towards the 10 nine dollar area but that would still in the context of where we've been over the last six seven months that's still a healthy pause and if we can do that in in a choppy kind of manner rather than go straight there if we can do it in a choppy manner and, and take a little bit of time to get down there i think it'll be a great buying opportunity for another leg higher okay so looking for another leg higher merrill rides high panel i would appreciate your views on surtex medical group at present prices thanks i mean talk about a stock that's been going absolutely great guns every time i uh, try to buy some more of these it just keeps on shooting back up now looking at surtex um 
They're small particles um, that deal with liver cancer, so often inoperable liver cancer, and it's also targeted uh, treatment. I mean, the last six quarters, I think we've seen uh, double-digit growth coming through, but still penetration in its key markets is around about 2%, I think, so still... A lot of growth potential there. Um, Nick, looking at the chart, it's been a phenomenal looking chart. Maybe we'll try and bring up Surtex's share price chart. Um, SRX is the stock code. Can it continue? Well, it's at all time highs. The trend has been very strong. We had that pause like we talked about all evening here. It sat between really 10 and $13 for, uh, for a good year. And then we just broke up in a hurry and have moved on with it. So we're now up to what's that, almost $15.70, $16, all-time highs, very strong, very illiquid stock. So we don't get involved with these kinds of ones. Only trades uh, about 120,000 shares today, so very, very liquid. So now very strong support down around that $13.50, $14 area. I'd be uh, only concerned if we broke back down through there. We've got Tony on the line from Melbourne. Tony, welcome to the show. What's your question tonight? Oh, look, thanks, guys. Love the show. It's on um, anti-diagnostics. Yeah, the mix-and-go product seems to be doing very well. So that's a proprietary um, metal iron-based glue called mix-and-go, which is used to couple antibodies in diagnostic tests and to diagnose diagnostic uh, devices as well. Now, with a lot of these type of companies, we do worry that they have enough cash in the bank. But, you know, they raised $5.5 million back in December 2013. Shares have been going pretty well. I'm um, Nick just looking at the chart. What do you think? Another example of it. I mean, Tony said it. it the stock went up 120%, sat in a sideways range for four months, and it's just risen another 100% as it came out of that range. The important thing we're seeing here at the moment is when we have up sessions, it's on increased volume, and on down sessions like we had today, volume drops off. Whilst that trend remains in place, that's a positive sign. So, look, there's probably scope for it to come back and test support, which is around the 20 cent level. If it drops through that, it would be concerned. But at this stage, it looks good. All-time highs, trending well. And we have Robert on the line from Sydney. Robert, welcome to the show. What's your question tonight? Hi, thanks. Uh, thanks for taking my call. I have a question regarding BDL resources. Uh, recently, with the oil uh, gold price coming up, uh, mm. the price of BDL resources uh, actually facing and going down. And also, another question I have regarding uh, annual report. Is it any deadline for producing annual report? Because I believe the end of financial year for BDL resources was January. And now sure. we go to March and there was no annual report. Sure. So we're still looking for an annual report from Beadle coming out. Now, Beadle Resources um, haven't offered any guidance either, so we're just waiting to see um, some sort of guidance for Beadle Resources. Now, Gold, um, you were predicting further gains for Gold. What, what's the outlook like for Beadle? BDR? Is uh, BDR stock? is really stuck in a range. It's a very, very choppy stock. It doesn't trend very, very well at all, Robert. Um, where it looks like we're coming to the bottom end of the range which sits around that 65 cents I uh, would be concerned if we broke down and through that but um, doesn't do a great deal for me I'm afraid it's just tracking sideways in, in a bit of a range and, and doesn't have a history of trending particularly well. Natty writes would the three of you give me your views on Sydney Airport and seek at present prices? Sydney Airport has been trending well we bought it back in about April 2012 still hold it today all-time highs it chops around a little bit but it's a low volatility stock as you'd expect from an infrastructure stock. So, um, yeah, look, it could do with a little bit of consolidation here, but it has hit all-time highs, and uh, we continue to hold it. As for Seek, we got a little lucky with Seek. We were riding it higher than um, we got in just before it popped. So um, it's gone parabolic recently, obviously, for, for news that's come out. So I wouldn't be surprised to see some profit takers step in. So long as the volume on that profit taking isn't particularly high, then uh, it will, should or should go into a pause, and that would be a healthy sign for us. So again, trend is up, all-time highs, and we'll continue to hold. Sydney, Graham, welcome to the show. What's your question tonight? Thank you. Look, I'm thinking of getting out of uh, Beach Petroleum and going into Suncorp. Now I know they're from two different stables, mm. uh, but I've just 
held on to beach for so long now, I just want to change. Sure. So having a look at Beach Petroleum and Suncorp, I noticed that City has issued a sell on Beach Petroleum in the last couple of days, saying that you know some of the results coming through from the unconventional Cooper Basin space have been disappointing. There's still longer-term potential there, but the results so far have been quite disappointing. Um, and just looking at a switch into Suncorp Mirwag. Uh, we have Beach in our uh, momentum portfolios. Trend is up. We're tagging. Interesting here that there's a few um, um, sell recommendations coming out from the brokers. This is the third time we've hit this exact level. It's the all-time high. We hit it back in 2006, we hit it in 2012, and we're tagging it right now. So the $64 million question is if can we get up and through this time around. So um, at the moment, though, there's, uh, the trend is up. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see it consolidate here with those typical profit takers coming in at the old highs. But if you can get up and through there, you're in blue sky territory. So uh, that trend could continue if we get up through there. So that level's 175. OK, so a pivotal point for Beach Petroleum, BPT, at the moment. Yeah, how are you going? Just wanted to get the panel's view on uh, Central Petroleum or CTP. Sure. So having a look at Central Petroleum, we might start off with a technical view first. So Nick, looking at Central Petroleum, what are your views? Yeah, good day today. Um, Price-wise, the stock was up 7%, but we did close off the highs. And Anthony, the thing you've got to be careful of is when you see an increase in volume like we saw today and a close off the highs, it does mean there is a little bit of selling around. So we're seeing a little bit of that at the moment for CTP, a little bit of a warning sign. So just watch how follow through occurs tomorrow. But if we can hold here without um, reversing the gains we've had recently, then potentially we could trade up towards 65 cents. So trend is up, but just watch a bit of selling coming in at the moment. It's come a long way over the last week or two. Okay. This one from Kuma who writes, I'd like a fundamental and technical view on Westside WCL. I'm holding at the moment. Um, Nick, what do you think of this one? Look, there has been a rapid increase in price, but uh, over the last week or so, we've also seen a dramatic pickup in the volume. And generally speaking, when you get the weaker closes after a parabolic move like we've seen here, that generally means sellers. So I'm a little bit um, sceptical at the moment. I would suggest that immediate upside is probably gone. Um, and we need some time to consolidate. So long as that consolidation is done on low volume, that's a very positive sign. I'd probably be concerned if it came back through 25 cents, but it has got up and over some resistance, and that's a good sign, but needs a bit of a pause at the moment. And on that note, that's all we have time for today. Thanks so much to our guests for a fantastic show. So Nick Raj from the Charters.